Hello and welcome for an exclusive interview here on France 24 with the president of Azerbaijan, Ilham Haliev. He joins us uh, from Baku. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for being our guest here on France 24. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk to the French audience. Mr. President, we're exactly a year after the start of the war between Azerbaijan and Armenia, which your country won after 44 days. Last week at the United Nations, for the first time since the end of the fighting, the foreign minister of both countries, Azerbaijan and Armenia, met. Does this mean that dialogue is restarting between both sides and that there is hope for peace? I want to hope that this is exactly the case because uh, Azerbaijan uh, already on several occasions publicly expressed its readiness to establish dialogue with Armenia, not only establish dialogue, but actually to start uh, working on the future peace agreement between Azerbaijan and Armenia. The war is over. The conflict has been resolved. So we need to engage in uh, new activity in the region in order to make the region more predictable, stable, and safe. And the meeting of the foreign ministers of both countries is a good indicator of uh, these endeavors. I hope that it will not be the only one meeting, but it will be a beginning of the new process, process of normalization of relations between Azerbaijan and Armenia, and process which will give and can give a new dimension to a broad cooperation in the region of Southern Caucasus. Right. Uh, have you reached out uh, to the leadership of Armenia, to the prime uh, minister, uh, to try to restart that dialogue and go towards peace? Since the war ended uh, last November, we had only uh, one uh, opportunity to see each other. That was during the trilateral meeting organized by the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, in Moscow this January. And uh, that was a meeting was, uh, the aim of the meeting was to plan the post-war uh, developments. Uh, we didn't have any other chance to see each other, probably because of pandemic, probably because of some other reasons, but Azerbaijan never. Even during the war, uh, during the occupation, never objected any kind of high-level context. We, on the contrary, we think that uh, these communications may uh, answer many questions which both uh, sides may have, and also to uh, be a starting point for the new development of the region. Our position is straightforward. We think that the conflict is resolved. There should be no return to uh, the past. There should be no signs of revanchism in Armenia. We need to talk about future. We need to talk about peace and how to make our region more stable and safe. Are you ready to call Prime Minister Pachinyan to tell him that precisely? <laughs> Probably not the way how you suggest. Usually the contacts uh, between the leaders of two countries were organized under the umbrella of OAC Minsk Group. It was them who proposed the agenda. It was them who organized the meeting. In my experience as president, I never had a telephone conversation with any leader of Armenia, so probably it's not the right uh, way how to do it. But if uh, Minsk Group co-chairs will uh, suggest such a meeting, of course, we will not be against it. Uh, uh, Mr. President, in a speech uh, marking uh, the onset of the war, uh, you said, and I'm quoting you, if we see Armenian fascism rising again, if we see a new threat, we will crush Armenian fascism against without any hesitation. This doesn't really sound like an olive branch, does it? You know, uh, that was uh, the uh, wording which reflects the situation in Armenia. Uh, with respect to our position about establishing peace in the region, I made several uh, public statements. Probably if you look on the internet, you will find them particularly to start to work on delimitation and demarcation of the borders, to start preparing for uh, negotiations, comprehensive negotiations on uh, uh, peace agreement with Armenia. All these uh, are gestures of goodwill. 
and none of them, by the way, was responded adequately by Armenian leadership. They either ignored them or they were saying that they are not ready. But uh, the source of my statement was the tendency which we observe in Armenia, the tendency of revanchism among certain part of political establishment, not only opposition, but also government, public statements, and more important, uh, practical steps in order to seek revenge, uh, attempts to militarize Armenia, attempts to get access to new modern weapons for one purpose, to restart it again. Therefore, my words, they may seem rude, but the main purpose of those uh, words was to warn Armenian leadership and Armenian political establishment that any sign of revanchism, any sign of threat to our people and our statehood and our territorial integrity will be responded, and they know how we respond, and the Second Karabakh War showed that they uh, have no chance in front of us. We don't want to start war. We don't need it. We never need it uh, during the years of negotiations. But now, I think it's a time to warn them to give up the efforts of revanchism and to look to the future. Uh, there, there is one issue. Uh, do you consider that you've recovered all the territories? I mean, you've made some statements in the past, uh, for example, uh, citing Yerevan, the capital of Armenia, as being historical territory. So, uh, yes, you've won land that you consider yours back uh, last year, but there are still some questions. Do you still have some territorial claims over territories that Armenia considers to be its territory? No, in my statements, you will never find any sign of territorial claims. What I was talking about was talking about historical truth. And it's a historical fact that in 1920, the Soviet government uh, decided, and did it actually, they separated integral part of Azerbaijan, Zengizur, and adjusted it to Armenia. It was uh, 1920. 101 a year ago. And talking about our historical lands, I didn't mean that we have a territorial claims. You will never find in any of my speech uh, words like that. But at the same time, we, as every other nation, should know uh, its history. Our new generation should know its history, ancient history, and which territories we were living on and how to go back. And I'm sure that we will go back, but we will go back, as I said many times, not on tanks. We will go back by cars, by trains, by, uh, you know, by foot. When situation normalized, when peace agreement f is achieved, why shouldn't we go back? We, it's our uh, legitimate right. But answering your question, I want to draw attention of uh, our spectators that Armenia has territorial claims against Azerbaijan. They still claim that Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, as they call it, uh, do not belong to us. They still claim that either it belongs to Armenia or it is kind of independent entity. But there is no Nagorno-Karabakh on the political and geographic map of Azerbaijan. This kind of uh, entity uh, does not exist. And therefore, Armenia, in the first place, should withdraw any territorial claims against Azerbaijan, behave itself as a good neighbor, and we will respond adequately. Are you uh, ready to provide some autonomy to uh, Karabakh? I mean, Armenia has its claim, but uh, the Minsk Group, uh, you've uh, called them. I mean, the U.S. Uh, has always said that the uh, issue of uh, Karabakh is still unresolved. You claim it is resolved, it is yours, but uh, many countries, uh, you know, moderating this conflict for years claim that's actually not the case. Well, my advice to those countries who say it is not resolved uh, to um, think about uh, how they can provide a place on their own territory to settle Armenians and to create a second Armenian state on their own territory. Why should they think that there should be second Armenian state on the territory of Azerbaijan without any legal, political, and historical grounds? When I say the conflict is resolved, that's my position. 
And uh, I defend this position, and the reality on the ground showed that this position is correct. Uh, therefore, uh, any kind of statement that the conflict is not resolved are not uh, only inappropriate, but very dangerous. If it is not resolved, then those who say that, they should say how it should be resolved. What they uh, understand when they uh, say things like Nagorno-Karabakh, in which boundaries, in which area, in what form, there is no uh, even a hint to answer those questions. Therefore, saying that the conflict is not resolved is counterproductive and dangerous. It means that there should be other, uh, maybe hostile actions, in order to resolve it. And coming to your question about the autonomy, uh, Ms. Group co-chairs know very well the position of Azerbaijan during the 28 years of useless negotiations that we were ready to uh, provide Armenians in Azerbaijan with a, a certain level of self-governance. Self but Armenians always rejected it. They always said no, only independence. But now, when the conflict is over, they start to talk about autonomy, which today is not on our agenda. Armenians who live today in Karabakh, uh, in the area which is now under the um, responsibility of Russian peacekeepers, are citizens of Azerbaijan, like any other uh, representative. So they will not have any autonomy. This is now off the table. So they will not have any autonomy. This is now off the table. Exactly. This is off the table. Uh, I, I want to uh, get uh, to the position of, of France. I mean, France has criticized your actions, even uh, recently uh, calling you to withdraw from some of Armenia's alliance. Do you consider France an honest broker? Uh, you know, we've been actively working uh, with France on this issue and on uh, many other issues of our bilateral relations during the all years of our independence. France always was uh, considered as a friendly country uh, in Azerbaijan. We had uh, implemented a lot of uh, economic and trade projects, infrastructure projects, and relations developed uh, very successfully. And uh, we hope that as an honest broker, uh, as a co-chair of the Minsk Group, France will uh, uh, be committed to this responsibility. If France uh, was not uh, co-chair of Minsk Group, of course, uh, any kind of relations between any countries are up to them. And we know about the historical ties between France and Armenia. We know about the very active Armenian community in France, which to a certain degree may influence uh, decision makers. But during the war, frankly speaking, France was not behaving as honest broker. France took sides, took side of Armenia, uh, openly accusing Azerbaijan and uh, in its statements and actions uh, demonstrating one-sided approach. That was, uh, of course, a matter of concern, and we raised this concern because, uh, once again, I'd like to say, any country can have preferences, friends and not friends. It's up to them. We have nothing to say. But if a country has a mandate from OEC to be mediator, in this case, the country should be neutral. Uh, I don't want to go back to what uh, happened during the war and right after. We received positive uh, signals from Paris about our future relations, and we positively respond uh, to these signals. There have been contacts uh, on different levels, including the contact recently between foreign ministers of both countries. Azerbaijan has always been open uh, to cooperation. France is uh, one of the leading countries in the world, and uh, we want to have normal relations. Uh, and I think that uh, after one year passed since uh, the, uh, the war, uh, the beginning of the war, uh, I think now it's a time to, uh, how to say, have a very realistic approach to the region, what we want to achieve. And I'm sure France wants peace, stability, security in the region as we want, as hopefully Armenia wants, and we need to work on that. We need to concentrate on that and not to go back to what happened during one year. Uh, as far as we are concerned, we are not going to, uh, how to say, exploit 
these uh, very unpleasant developments, we want to turn the page. Right. Uh, we are uh, reaching uh, the end of the interview. I just have two more questions for you, Mr. President. Uh, prisoners of war, Human Rights Watch has accused uh, Azerbaijan of uh, holding them and torturing uh, them. What is your response and are you ready uh, to exchange prisoners of war with, with Armenia as a sign of goodwill? Uh, we, of course, uh, reject these accusations. Uh, all prisoners of war which were taken as prisoners during the war have been returned to Armenia. Armenian government can confirm that. We returned them even before they returned our prisoners of war. Those people whom some uh, NGOs are referring to are those people who were sent by Armenian military command two weeks after the war ended, after the uh, November declaration was signed. They were sent to our positions and they committed crimes. They killed four Azerbaijani servicemen and they were disarmed and captured. And many of them have already been returned, those who did not participate in crimes. Those who participated in crimes have been sentenced uh, by uh, justice, uh, our justice. Uh, uh, but Armenia claims you still <coughs> hold prisoners of, uh, of war, uh, that court. you're not telling uh, the truth. Uh, no. Those who we hold, according to classification according to all the convention, international conventions cannot be considered as prisoners of war. Prisoners of war are those people who have been detained during the war. On 10 November, the war stopped. In the beginning of December, we find in the territory which we liberated, 62 Armenian uh, members of sabotage group who have been sent there on the 26th of November. 16 days after the war ended. They cannot be considered as prisoners of war. And we returned many of them already as a sign of goodwill. But the rest uh, of those people who are uh, serving the sentence here, they've committed a crime and they must be brought to justice and they've been brought to justice. Last question, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the organization Reporters Without Borders has called on you uh, to stop threats and violence against a man called Mohammad Mirzali. He's an Azerbaijan blogger who's a refugee here in France. He was badly stabbed in an attack here on French soil in last March. So the question is, uh, according to Reporters with Our Borders, you are sending people to silence those voices abroad. First of all, uh, we stopped any kind of uh, communication with Reporters Without Borders NGO many years ago, I think something like 15 years ago, because of very biased position and a very uh, unjust approach to Azerbaijan. Therefore, their report actually means nothing to me and to Azerbaijani people. Uh, there are hundreds of people living in uh, Europe and also in France who do not like how we handle things in Azerbaijan. They live uh, in France, in other countries, and uh, nobody touched them. If something happens to a person uh, which suffers in your country, it's up to the justice of your country to uh, investigate it. It's not a matter of NGO to accuse Azerbaijan of that. Does your uh, investigator so you have deny enough any responsibility to say that somebody on, on the attack on this individual? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100% I deny, and uh, without any proofs without investigation, without a clear evidence of who committed what crime, all kinds of uh, accusations are absolutely groundless and biased. President Ilham Haliyev, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing here on the France 24 interview, and thank you very much for watching it.